Phoenix is the most popular framework for web development in Elixir. And one of its most exciting features is the ability to add real-time functionality, which we can do with channels. In this episode, let's see how we can build a simple chat application with Phoenix using WebSockets. Let's start this project from the ground up. So the first thing we'll need is a fresh Phoenix application. Let's create a new one with the very unoriginal name, chat. And we'll install the dependencies. Then we'll cd into the chat directory and create our database with mix ecto create. Then let's start our application to make sure everything looks good. And great, we see the familiar Welcome to Phoenix page. Now that we know everything is working, let's get started on building our chat room. We'll need to generate a new channel. Phoenix provides a generator we can use. We'll just need to give it a name. Let's play with the idea of a chat room and call ours Water Cooler. It creates a Water Cooler channel module. We'll look at it in a minute, but first let's add our channel to the user socket handler. We'll send any events with the water cooler topic to our new water cooler channel. The asterisk is a wildcard, catching any events coming to our water cooler topic, regardless of the subtopic, and sending them to our water cooler channel. With that updated, let's open the water cooler channel module that we generated, and we see that it has a join callback that will handle events for the water cooler lobby topic. In the example that Phoenix creates, it gives us an authorize function that will always return true. It's a nice guidestone for where we could start to put custom authorization logic. In our example, we won't do any authorization, so let's remove this logic and have it always return the OK tuple with our socket. And since we won't be using the payload, we can ignore that with the underscore. The handle and ping function we won't use for this example, so let's remove it. The handle and shout function is in charge of broadcasting any chat events to everyone that's joined our channel. Notice that this is set to pattern match on the string shout. We'll need to remember to use this when we push events out from our client. And we'll remove the authorized function since we remove the authorization logic in the join callback. Now let's open our socket JS. And we see some code has already been populated that imports and connects our socket to the socket path in our endpoint module, which is then handled by our user socket. Our default code also shows how we can join channels with a topic. The topic we define in our water cooler channel is water cooler lobby. So let's update that here. It then logs out a message to our browser's console, letting us know if we've joined successfully or not. Then let's open our app.js and import our socket. Now let's go to the command line and start our server. Let's give it a shot. We'll open our browser and in the console, we see our success message is printed. Now that we're joining successfully, let's create a chat window and a form we'll use to post messages with. But let's first customize our site a bit. We'll remove the Phoenix CSS style sheet. And in the app CSS, I'll paste in some custom CSS, which is available in the linked GitHub repo. And we'll open our app template. And let's remove the Phoenix logo. And then in our pages index template, we'll paste in the chat window and a form that will have our username and message fields. Now let's open the browser and see what it looks like. We see our chat box and our form. Now let's add some JavaScript to get our chat working so that when we post a message, it's displayed. Back in our editor, we'll create a new file in assets.js named watercooler.js. And we'll define our watercooler object then we'll create a function in init that will take our socket. And with our socket, we'll join the channel with our water cooler lobby topic. Now that we've joined our channel, we need to send and receive events. Let's create a new function, listen for chats, that will take our channel. And I'll paste in the code for sending events, but let's walk through this. We're getting our chat form with the ID chat form and then listening for when it's submitted. When the form is submitted, we're preventing any further action with prevent default. Then we're getting the username from the form and the message from the form. Then we're calling channel push with shout and a payload of our username and our message. This will send our event to the server where it will be picked up by our water cooler channel. Then we're resetting the username and message fields on our form. Now that we're set up to send events, we need to receive them. 
We'll use channel on to subscribe to channel events matching on shout. Then we'll get our chat box and create a new message block. Then we'll build up our message by getting the name and message from the received payload. We'll then append that message to our chat box. Now let's open our app.js and we'll import water cooler. Then we'll call init, passing in our socket to use. And if we go back to the browser and try typing a message, we see our message is received and broadcasted out to everyone that's joined. And let's try sending a message back. And great, that works too. This is great, but when we refresh the page, our chat disappears. This is because nothing's being persisted. We'll fix that by saving our chats to the database. Let's have Phoenix do the heavy lifting for us here and use the context generator to build out the modules and database migration that we'll need. We'll go to the command line and stop the server and let's create a new context chats. Our ecto schema module will be message and our table name will be messages with the name column that's a string and a body column that's a text. Then we'll migrate our database and let's take a quick look at the message module that was created. We see our schema with our body and name fields and our change set. Then let's open the chats context and it's been populated with some functions to save and retrieve our messages. Great, now we need to save our messages when someone posts one in the chat. Let's do that in our channel. We'll open our water cooler channel module then let's alias our chat's context. And in our handle in function, we'll save the message before it's broadcasted out. While we could make this asynchronous, let's keep it simple for the purposes of this episode. Now that we're saving our messages, we need to load any existing ones into the chat. Let's open our page controller and we'll alias our chat's context module. Then let's get all of our messages and we'll pass them in our assigns. Now we can open our index template and render any messages that were returned in our chat box. Then let's restart our server and go back to the browser and post some messages into our chat. And let's do a quick check of the database. And great, we see our messages are there. And if we go back to our chat and refresh the page, we see our existing messages are loaded. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and happy coding.